who was it? Steve, Steven, wants to use the Ama Ligur, or Ligur. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that, but you know, this customized RSI indicator here. Um, and it's a pretty simple question here. So he wants to get signals, right, when the indicator crosses below. So you can see the indicator has gone up into the upper range area above 0.85. And so when the indicator crosses back down below 0.85, he wants to generate a short signal. If the indicator goes down, you know, into this oversold area, and then when it crosses back up, you know, above a certain threshold level, he wants to see a signal there. So that, that's going to be a very simple logic to build here. Hmm. It doesn't look like I actually have that particular indicator on my chart. All right. Well, since I don't have that particular version of RSI, I'm just going to have to use the, the standard RSI. All right, there's the RSI, there we go. And yeah, you know what I can do? Uh, it's, oops, one too many. So w one of the reasons why Steven was using this custom, um, the Gura um, RSI is he says it's smoother. It, it runs a little smoother there. So, so what I'll do is instead of using the RSI plot, I will use the average plot. So let me, uh, yeah, I'll make the average plot visible. Let's apply it there. Well, I had to go back quite a ways to find a spot. Well, actually, now the indicator doesn't even get down into the oversold area, but okay. Anyways, so I've got some lines here marking, you know, the oversold at 85 and the um, overbought at 85 and oversold at 15. So what we want to see here, let's see, let me scroll back. Okay, here we go. So here's one spot, right, where the indicator goes above 85. And so we want to see, see a short signal when it crosses below right there, like so. All right, so the way we're going to do this um, is, here we go. Make a new logic template here. The way we're going to do this is we're going to need two crossover solvers. So we're going to use, we need one crossover solver for when the indicator goes um, overbought. So we can find the, the crossing down of the overbought level. And we need a second crossover solver so that when the indicator goes into the oversold and crosses up, we can get that crossover when it crosses up. Right. So, all right, so let's grab, um, so we're, we're gonna use some crossover solvers on the default time frame here. All right, so we're looking for when the RSI crosses down the 85. So let's see, all right, so the input A, that's gonna be the RSI. There's the RSI, and remember, I'm using the average line here. Um, so I need to select the average plot just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Um, and then input B, well, that's going to, that's going to be the 85 level, right? That's going to be our over, overbought level. So I'm going to change the type. So input B, we're going to change the type to fixed value. And we want an 85 there. Right. And there we go. So we can see when the indicator is crossing up above 85 and crossing down below 85 we're getting signals but uh, right we don't want the cross up signal we don't want the long cross up signal so what I do is I take the evaluate and I only want to see the short only right and there we go so now we're left with only the cross down signal uh, so there we go so there's half of this signal right? 
And now the other half is I need to grab another uh, crossover solver. Connect that in. Again, this is going to be the RSI crossing up the 15, 15 level. All right, so input A, that will be the RSI indicator. All right, well, there it is. There's the RSI. And, you know, don't forget to change any kind of period settings, you know, to match, you know, to match what you have on the chart. And then select the average plot that I'm using. And now for input B, again, we want to use a fixed value. And we want to know when the RSI crosses the 15 value. And again, this time, so for the evaluate, we only want to see long signals when the RSI is crossing up the 15 value. All right, so again, if, if we look at this, right, so if we look at this, right, the RSI is oversold, and we want a long signal when it crosses up, right? So from this crossover solver, we only want to see the long output for the cross-ups, right? So again, so for the evaluate, we only want to see the long signals coming out of this. So and now the last step is an OR node. So we want to combine both of these together. Like so. So an, an OR node basically joins a bunch of solvers together um, into one output. And that is it. All right, so this was a pretty simple, simple one to do here. And let's see. All right, yeah, so we definitely have a couple of uh, short signals there. And I don't think the uh, RTY produced any oversold. Yeah, because the, the markets have really been in an up strong uptrend for the last couple of months. So, yeah, so we just don't have any. Well, all right, let's, let's add a couple of extra days here of data and see if maybe we get some short, some long signals, sorry. No, we sure don't. All right. Anyways, so yeah, we don't have any long signal examples, but this is the logic that 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 uh, we need. Yeah, for this type of um, double, you know, I've 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 heard this referred to quite often as a double crossover here. Yeah, because it's basically two different crossovers. So, um, all right, that's that one. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's give this a name here. All right, so that one's done.